Hello my writerly friends. Today I want to talk about how to spot reputable lip mags. Now for those of you who don't know, I have a writing blog over at victoriagriffin.net, but I also manage the blog at Stuff Writers Like, and I posted on this topic earlier this month, so I will link that in the description, but I'm going to cover a lot of the same information. Now we all know publishing in lip mags and journals and anthologies is a fantastic way to build writing credits, especially if you're looking to publish that novel, trying to snag an agent, and you want to fill your bio with good credits from publishing short stories. But we don't want to fall into the trap of just publishing anywhere that will accept our work. Because one, it doesn't look good in our bios. And two, that's not the purpose of publishing. We want to publish with good, reputable publications that are getting our work out to readers and furthering our writing career. Basically, we want to work with publications that we will be proud to see our name in the byline. So how do we spot these publications? Well, there are some signs to look out for, good signs and bad signs. One very quick bad sign is if they ask contributors to pay, run. Run the opposite direction. That is not a publication you want to be involved with. Now, I'm not talking about reading fees, which while if you're submitting to agents, there should never be a reading fee. That's not something that a reputable agent will do. But a lot of lit mags, journals, anthologies do charge reading fees, especially if they accept submissions online. They may charge a two to five dollar fee to submit and they use that typically to pay for the cost of submittable or whatever submission management system they're using. So while that's a personal preference, um, whether you want to pay that reading fee or look for publications that do not charge to submit, if they're asking you to actually pay to have your piece published with them, do not do it. That is not good. So what that would look like is the editor would come back to you and say, hey, we loved your piece, we're accepting it, send us this amount of money and it will be published in our magazine. No. Another bad sign, the submission guidelines are non-existent or out of date. The publication should have a website, it should be up to date, and they should have their submission guidelines right there for you to check out. Now, some guidelines go more in depth, some are just very basic, but they should have something. They should also have a masthead with names of editors and who is working on this publication. If the editors and the people putting the publication out are not putting their names on it, that's a problem. <laughs> so you should be able to research a publication and find out something about it. The amount that you're going to find out about it depends on how big it is, how old it is, but it shouldn't just be a blank page saying send us your stories. <laughs> a good sign, and this is an obvious one, but it's something that we may not think about when we're submitting to tons of publications. The work is high quality. Yes, take a second to actually read the publication. Now this is really easy for online publications. Just click on the last issue and read some of the stories. Are they good? Do you like them? Are they similar to what you do? We don't want to be published in a magazine that we don't respect. So be a reader first and then a contributor. Those are the publications that you're going to be the most proud of. Another good sign. The magazine publishes regularly. Now this doesn't always work for anthologies. If it's a one-off anthology, then of course they're not going to be publishing regularly. But if it is a magazine, you should be able to see an issue they put out within the last year. Of course, if it is a brand new publication, then they won't have an issue out. There's nothing wrong with submitting to and supporting new publications. Of course, it doesn't have the weight that a very established publication will, but they can still be reputable and good places to submit your work to. But if you see that the last publication was in 2006 and they're still soliciting work, that's a problem. That means they're soliciting work and then doing nothing with it and sitting on it. And you do not want that to happen. The other option is that they are defunct and 
you're sending your story out into dead space. <laughs> A good sign the publication is affiliated with a college or university. Some of the best magazines out there are put out by MFA programs. If it's affiliated with a university, you know they're on a regular publishing schedule and the people working on those magazines are passionate, they love what they do, and they know about it. So that's always a great place to submit your work. Bad sign. The website has typos, ads, or broken links. Of course, we do not want to submit to a publication whose website is riddled with typos. That should be pretty straightforward. If they don't know how to edit and proofread their website, the publication is probably not going to be top notch. If they have ads on their site, their priorities are not what you want to see. That means they are trying to make money off of their website. So you can assume that their publication is not selling well if they're focused on web ads rather than marketing their publication. Broken links means it's not being maintained and if the website is not being maintained then the overall publication is probably not being maintained. Again, it may be defunct or it may be a project someone started and then doesn't have time for. In either case, it's not somewhere you want to submit. One of the best ways to check the legitimacy of a publication is Duotrope. Now most of us have heard of that. They are paid now, but you can still utilize Duotrope without having a paid account. To be listed on Duotrope, publications have to meet certain criteria. They have to accept unsolicited submissions, have a maintained website, display submission guidelines, they cannot charge for publication. They have to be actively reading and curating submissions, and they have to have an established publication history and publish regularly. They also give you a little note if they believe the publication may be defunct, and they note fledgling publications that are under a year old. Now, you have to have a paid account to use Duotrope search feature, but you do not need an account to actually view the listings. So if you find a publication you're not sure about, just go to Google, type in the publication name, and Duotrope, and it'll pull up the listing. You can click on it, check it out, see if there are any red flags, and make sure it's somewhere you want to submit to. Now, if a Duotrope listing does not come up, that means that the publication probably did not meet those criteria and you'll want to think twice about submitting. Now, that doesn't mean that it's an awful publication. Not everybody chooses to list on Duotrope, but most do. So, again, if it doesn't come up, then you'll really want to do your homework and make sure that this is a good place for your work. Okay, that's my tips. The biggest thing is that only submit to publications that you will honestly be proud to be included in. If an acceptance letter would not make you want to jump up and down, then don't submit. It's not worth it. I hope this was helpful. As always, feel free to leave any questions or comments below. I love hearing from you guys. If you enjoyed this video, click that like button, subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see y'all next time.